What's up friends and welcome back to my channel. This past week has been a very difficult one for me personally. I'm in Virginia right now dealing with an unexpected family emergency. And through all of this, it really put into perspective for me a topic I've been wanting to address on this channel for a long time, and that is family health problems. Now, I have spent years working on my own health, doing the research, testing the science, looking at data, and tracking my progress over time. And I am so immensely grateful to have a platform like this to be able to share all this information with you. But there comes a time in your life when you've done all of this work, but still somehow haven't convinced your friends and family to get on board. Well, I'm here to hopefully help change that. So in this video, I'll be sharing the top obstacles I've faced and give you some real concrete tips that can help you empower your friends and family to start looking at their health differently. Now, given the current circumstances, this won't be as polished or B-roll heavy as most of my videos, but I really do hope that you find this information useful. So full disclaimer, I grew up in a pretty typical standard American household. It was the 90s, so toaster strudels for breakfast, McDonald's once a week, and TV on until we pretty much went to bed. Now, did I have a great childhood? Absolutely. And I certainly wouldn't have changed any of that. But as I've entered my 30s and started to learn more about how to take control of my health, I have moved away from most of those habits. But my family hasn't. And so the real problem is that once you start to take better control of your health physically and mentally and you start feeling better, well, you kind of just want the same for everyone in your life, especially those you love, and even more so if they are struggling with their health. So how do you help? And based on my own experience with my family and my fiance's family, there is actually a lot you can do if you approach it the right way. So number one is timing. And if you have to travel to see your family, I'm guessing that the car ride home from the airport is probably not the best time to bring these issues up. It's really important to set aside time when it feels right. And I'm speaking in broad terms here because literally every family is different. In my family, the dinner table is probably not the best place for this discussion, but a morning chat over coffee might be. And you might even wanna give your friend or family member a heads up that you wanna talk about some health stuff so it doesn't feel like it's coming out of left field. After all, at the end of the day, you're doing this out of love, so make it a discussion and not a monologue. And I've gotta say, timing, in my experience, has played a huge role in how this messaging is received. Number two is baby steps. So I certainly didn't solve all of my health problems in a single day, and you certainly can't expect your family or friends to do the same. So when it comes to changing habits, I would say just start with one thing that is A, easily achievable, and B, could have a profound impact on the quality of their life. Let's take sleep, for example. Now, I can't necessarily convince my mom to spend $300 on a neurostimulating headband for sleep, but I can convince her to get blackout curtains, put her phone in warm mode, and drink magnesium-rich coconut water right before bed. These are definitely small steps, but their steps in the right direction. Trust me, if you try to throw everything at them at once, their diet, their exercise, lifestyle, blah, 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 things are just gonna miss. And I have learned this the hard way time and time again. So keep it simple and keep it easy to start. And even if you do wanna change all of their eating and exercise habits, I'd say start with the low hanging fruit first. And yes, that pun was intended. Number three, show them the data. Now, I am not a doctor and I certainly don't pretend to be. Even if I did have an MD next to my name, I'm not really sure that would change anything with my family. Your family is going to be the hardest to convince because they've seen your ups and downs. They know you're not perfect and no matter how many thousands of hours of research you've put into your own health, they still will remember the time that you ate that entire bowl of raw cookie dough in one sitting. That being said, you do have an ally here, and that ally is data. If you can get them to look at their data, whether that be blood work, a gut microbiome test, glucose monitoring, or even sleep data, that will give them concrete information to work with and maybe even provide a more compelling argument as to why they need to take control of their health. 
I am a big fan of testing for this reason as it really opened my eyes to some markers that I could actually improve. And if you wanna see my top five health test recommendations, I'll include a link to that video in the description below. Number four, lead by example. This seems pretty obvious, but when it comes to your family and their health, you really have to practice what you preach around them. So wear your blue blocking glasses, show them your aura ring data, and heck, order a grass-fed, grass-finished steak when you're out for dinner. Whatever habits you normally do to improve your health, continue to do them while you're around your family and friends, even if they seem a little bit fringe. And most importantly, explain the why behind these practices and really make it a learning opportunity for them. I have personally found that my family is way more receptive to all of my crazy health hacks when I explain to them how they work and why I'm doing them for my long-term health. Number five, meet them where they are. And speaking of learning, everyone has a preferred method of digesting information. Now, I personally love podcasts, but my sister loves videos and my mom is a big fan of books. So if you wanna share health content, try to find the medium that is gonna work best for them and then ask for their feedback. Part of the excitement of starting your health journey is being able to share some of your biggest takeaways with others. So make it a dialogue and see what has really sparked their interest because that can actually help you gauge the conversation. And perhaps most importantly, don't give up if you haven't gotten through the first time. I have sent countless articles and blog posts and podcasts that have gone unread and unlistened to. And I get it, it sometimes feels like a wasted effort, but that is where timing and persistence comes into play. I mean, you wouldn't just stop eating if there was always a long line at the grocery store. You would keep going back again and again, and you would eventually just wait it out until you were able to get in. And I guess that same metaphor can kind of apply to your family's health. Just because they haven't listened in the past doesn't mean they never will. So bottom line is don't give up. Keep sharing and sharing and knocking on that door until you finally strike a chord. It may take a while, but I believe you can get there. And number six is support system. Starting a new diet or changing your daily habits can be so daunting on your own even if you do have ironclad willpower. So if you want your family to work on their own health, you've got to start with a really strong foundational support system. And I'll get a little bit more specific here. If say your mom invests in a sleep tracker, tell her how excited you are to look over her data and then share your own experience with sleep and give her some tips on how to improve. Maybe offer to drive your friend to go get their blood work done if they're really nervous and say you'll hold their hand the whole time. Or if you live with someone, tell your partner you will get on board with trying their new crazy diet for a week or two. At the end of the day, you don't have to be a health expert to make them feel seen and supported. Sometimes it's just the simple act of showing up that can have the biggest impact. I would never have gotten so far in my own health journey had it not been for a really strong community of people who shared their own wins and setbacks with me. There is no perfect road to better health, but we can get a lot farther along that road with support and a tight-knit community. So that's my list of the top six strategies I've personally used to help my family and friends overcome their health obstacles and really begin to take better control of their own long-term health. Now, this is just a very high level overview and I plan to dive into some more specific details around things like sleep and fitness and diet in future episodes. But I hope this content resonates with you and I thank you guys so much for your support as I'm going through a very difficult experience. I didn't post last week, because I just didn't have time and my priority was to be there for my family. But I wanted to get this message out because it is so important. It affects so many of our lives and sometimes when the floor drops from underneath you, you just wanna be able to stand up and help others through their own journey. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something and I look forward to getting back to my normal routine in the coming weeks. I'm not certain when that's gonna be, but please bear with me and thank you so much for everything. I could not be here right now doing what I do without the support of you guys. So I appreciate it. I love you guys. 
and I can't wait to catch you on the next one.